Today is December 10th, 2003. My name is Jared Hunt, and this is Elaine Samo, and we're going to have an interview about Mrs. Samo's experiences during the Great Depression and her experiences and perceptions of the Second World War. Oh, introduce myself? Yeah. Okay. Uh, my name is Elaine Samo. Um, I was born in Fairhaven, Vermont, March 26, 1928. Um, I have four siblings, no brothers, all, all sisters, and they're all living in various areas of, of the United States. And I came to Glens Falls Hospital in 1950 as a newly registered RN from the Rutland Hospital in Vermont. And the reason I came was I had some older aunts who lived here, and at the time that I came, the second west part of the hospital was brand, well, not quite brand new, maybe about two years old. And they thought that I would like to come here and work. So I did. And I worked on pediatrics from 1950 to 1955. And I was going to have my first child and at that time, when you were going to be having a baby, when you were five months along, you had to quit because I guess the hospital didn't want to take any responsibility if something should happen. Okay. Just say my name, you mean? Okay. What's your name when you were born? Oh, when I was born? Curran, C-U-R-R-E-N. Put that in there? Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Hi, um, I'm Jared Hunt, and today is December 10th, 2003, and this is Mrs. Elaine Samo, and we're going to be conducting an interview today about the Great Depression and Mrs. Samo's perceptions and experiences during the Second World War. Samo. My name is Elaine Curran Samo. I was born in Fairhaven, Vermont, March 26, 1928. I am now 75 years old. Mrs. Samo, what was your first memories of the Great Depression? When you well, goods and materials, I was just very young. Goods and materials were very short. Uh, however, we learned to get along without these things. Uh, a vivid, really vivid memory is my father um, had a job at a Stasel milling company in Castleton, Vermont that made roofing material. And they would dig this material out of the earth and he uh, ran a steam shovel. But there was not enough work at the time for civilians, so he was transferred to Willimantic, Connecticut. Now, my mother had five girls uh, I have a sister 10 years older than I am, but then the other four were like two years different in their ages, so they were all, we were all little, little girls. So we took a train and we went to Willimantic, Connecticut. We were there three months only and we came back to Fairhaven. However, um, the school that we went to in Willimantic was called the Natchaug School. Wonderful school, we loved it. And, uh, Two of my sisters were too young to go to school, but my sister that was two years younger than I, she was in first grade and I was in third grade. And to this day, I still remember both the teachers' names. They were wonderful. Um, of course, we had a lot of rationing. We had ration stamps. Uh, you got them, I believe it was monthly. Yeah, monthly. And that was for um, basic things like eggs, sugar, butter, actually, we uh, probably, I probably should say oleo um, back then. That's What's what we oleo? had. Oleo is a substitute butter. Oh, okay. And it would come in a big brick, and it looked just like pure lard. Mm -hmm. And we had a little coloring thing that came with it yellow. And we had to let that soften up and then mix that all up so that we could use it. And it was not the best tasting thing in the world, but we, we did get along. And most, most people did have it, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, 
we had a bicycle. Now, in order to get a bicycle back then in the Depression, someone, either your mother or your father, had to have it to go back and forth to work. Mm -hmm. That was the only way you could get one. So we were a little bit uh, maybe underhanded, but my father said, well, he would ride it back and forth to the Stasel because it was only about three miles from Fairhaven. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, he rode it a couple of times, and I guess that was it. So the bicycle was handed over to us girls, and it was called a victory bike. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And it was two, two wheels, the handlebars, and that's about all. Um, was stripped of everything else. The tires were very, very thin due to, due to the shortage of rubber. Mm -hmm. So they were very thin, but four little girls had a very good time on that victory bicycle. We had it for quite a long time. And sometimes there were a few little arguments about whose turn it was to ride it, you know. But we, we managed. And I guess that when you are faced with obstacles like the Depression, it's like anything that you're faced with that maybe is not pleasant. You try to do the best you can with it. Um, when I think back, I think how brave our parents were, you know, to have to feed all these little mouths and maybe not know, you know, where all the food was coming from. Uh, they did have stations where you could go and pick up things like flour and sugar and like that. And we girls were, young girls were very proud and really didn't like to do that. So we had a little wagon. And what we would do is go up to this gentleman's house at night. We didn't want anybody to see us. <laughs> <laughs> because you know why, Jared? We would think people would say we were poor. And we didn't want to be known as poor, you know? So anyway, um, we, we did get through it. But as I say, I admire all the parents because uh, it, it was hard for them, I know. Were you ever affected by any of Roosevelt's programs or any, like anyone that you knew or any members of your uh, family? My father uh, got a job with the WPA, the Workmen's Progress Association. Mm -hmm. My father adored President Franklin Roosevelt because he thought he did help a lot. I know that Many people, and I've known it more as I've gotten older, did not like Franklin Roosevelt that well. But I, to this day, I, I, I still like him, you know, very much so. You know, yeah. And then, and then he, of course, he um, uh, developed a program called the Conservation Corps, Community Conservation Corps, the CCC. CCC. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that, I think that was mostly for like young men that needed that needed jobs. You know? Yeah, that was yeah. like going out to um, national parks. Yes, and, like, yes, yes, you're right. Like that. Yes, you're right, Jared. Mm -hmm. yeah. Did you listen to Roosevelt uh, often on the radio? Quite, yes. Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. Would, would be slight, just like today, watching him on TV, watching someone on TV. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Um, so. I'm trying to think if there's anything else. I can't think of anything else right now, you know. But. Well, probably a time where you really remembered him on the radio was on December 7th, yes, yes. Sunday morning, and I can't remember if I had come from Sunday school or if it was bef before Sunday school. I'm, I'm qu quite sure, but our radio was on. It was on a lot, just like we, a lot of people had the TV on. It was on a lot, and I was alone in the living room of our house in Fairhaven, and I couldn't believe it. And I said to myself, we are going to be bombed. And I'll tell you why I felt that way at 13, because Germany had pummeled London, England, night after night after night. I don't know, yes, I don't know how London survived. And that's all I could think of, because we used to hear about it on the radio, in the newsreels, when we'd go to the movies. And I was really frightened. Did you listen to Edward R. Burroughs? Like oh, oh, yes, yes, so yes. Did you liked him it? very much. Did you like him a lot? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, I did, yeah, yeah, liked him very much. So, just as a connection to, during 9-11, um, we discussed a lot of it during school. So after Pearl Harbor, did you have some sort of discussion, like on the Monday when you came back from school? Was there any I, sort of I believe we did. I can't remember too much, but I, I know that 
we, we must have. I'm sorry if I can't remember exactly what all the conversation was, probably like anything. You can't get your mind on anything else, you know, but that. Did, did the curriculum in the school change because of the war? Did your classes like follow it closely? Did they like, I remember yeah. um, a quote was like, the only good thing war is, is that it's a geography lesson, something like that. So did you do anything like that while in your classes? Well, um, I'll tell you one thing that, that happened. When I went in in 1942 in high school, we couldn't take typing because uh, typewriters were short, and you, you and you couldn't really buy them. So for a lot of you know uh, big classes or whatever. So all the time I was in high school, they never picked up typing. And and they always told us it was because you know of the wartime. But I think soon after I graduated, you know, things changed, and, and they, uh, you know, started that. Um, we, um, as the war went on, of course, the young men went to war. Help was short in every little town and city. So it was apple picking season, and Allen Orchards in Fairhaven, Vermont, they're still there, had a huge orchard, and they needed pickers, so they would bring a big truck, you know, to school in the morning. We had our lunch, and down we went to the orchard to pick apples. And um, it was we got like ten cents a bushel. And I was never a very fast picker, you know, but some of, some of the kids were, and everybody tried to see if they could outdo the other. But we did that for quite a few days. I can't tell you how long, but quite a few days, we did that. So we we felt that we were. We're helping the war effort, you know, because the young men weren't around to do it, you know. Um, did your family do any other things to help out in the war effort, like uh, scrap metal drive? Oh, yes, yes, scrap metal. You know, I think it was in our park that we had a big, big pile. You could go down there with anything you had. Rubber was another mm -hmm. thing, too. Of course, they needed all the rubber and metal they could get, you know, at that time for, I suppose, guns and mm -hmm. equipment, you know, tanks. Did you have a victory garden? Because a lot of people remember having victory No, garden. we um, lived in a home where there were, really wasn't that much yard. But my father, to do some work, he worked for a, um, a gentleman that um, was in charge of a slate quarry in Fairhaven. Lovely man. He lived across the street from us. And he had a huge garden. And my father went over there and um, helped tend that garden for him. He was very generous, you know, this gentleman mm -hmm. that he worked for, you know. But a lot of people did have victory gardens. We just didn't have the room okay. for a victory garden. I know they didn't have to be very big, but we didn't have one. <laughs> hmm. I remember, like, um, looking at some pictures of victory gardens. There was, like, pictures of, like, cartoon characters or anything like. There was, like, Donald Duck was mm -hmm. on one. And mm -hmm. Did they, did... Uh, was there a lot of like the war effort like going on like when you went to the movies like these reels like cartoons? Oh, yes, yes, there? yes. Um, we go to the movies and back then they always had a newsreel. Mm -hmm. So when we would go on Saturday, um, they would have newsreels and quite involved. And, they, and uh, they would show the planes bombing and this and that and the other thing, you know, um, all pertaining to the war. Yeah. Mm -hmm was very informative, yes. Mm -hmm. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Did you watch any of the war movies? Did you like enjoy watching them? Yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. yes. Do you have any favorites that you still remember? Um, I don't know if I have any favorites, but, um, but, I, but I do enjoy them. I, I enjoy, what I enjoy about a war movie is if there's something to do with, with spies. That's mm -hmm. one of my favorites, you know. Yeah. I can't think of any in particular, Jared, that, you know, that's my favorite, but they had quite a few movies, and, you know, and now you see them today on TV, they mm -hmm. bring them back, you know. Um, were your school activities affected by the war? Like, did you, did you send any um, care packages or letters or anything like oh, that? Oh, we, uh, there were uh, what we call um, V-mail. Yes, we did mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, they were. What did you exactly do? Email? 
Um, I think I wrote to a cousin way back, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. They were little, we wrote them and then somehow they were reproduced on very thin, on very small paper, mm -hmm. okay, and very fine print. I was reading a, a lot of the, the concept of like the popular culture kind of grew out, out of the war, like the teenage culture, because mm -hmm. because you were saying there was a labor shortage mm -hmm. and teenagers could get jobs mm -hmm. and make money. So mm -hmm. did you like mm -hmm. get a job babysitting or? Uh, yes, um, at 13 I started babysitting. Did a lot of babysitting. So did my sister, that's a little younger than I am. I even babysat for my eighth grade school teacher. And when I was a little bit older. I worked in a jewelry store in Fairhaven. I worked in a bakery. Loved that, not because it was just a bakery, but the people I worked for were lovely, lovely people. And I made, uh, in the summertime, I made like $15 a week, which was pretty good, you know, for, I was only like 15. And uh, so I, I did a lot of that until I, you know, 18, I went in training. You know. What did you do with your extra money? never really had a lot of extra money. If we had extra money, 10 cents to go to the movie, mm -hmm. I probably gave my parents some of that money that from the bakery, if mm -hmm. I remember. Um, 10 cents to go to the movie. The thing to do after school was go down to our local drugstore and get a float, Coke mm -hmm. float, float, Coke, you know, float Coke, I guess, Coke float. Um, we gathered there, and the gentleman that ran the pharmacy, he was all, all, also the pharmacist, and he was wonderful to the young kids, you know. But we behaved, you know, we knew better than to, you know, act up. But that was our, our thing to do, you know. You know. Um, of course, um, I l loved the sports. We always went and, you know, and cheered for our team, and I helped sell tickets to the basketball games when I was in school, you know. Um, pretty active in high school too, you know. Um, joined uh, in a couple of one act plays. Um, I was president of my freshman class, um, treasurer of my senior class, belonged to the Glee Club, which a lot of other people did too. And. In my senior year, I was an honor student, and in my senior year, I received the, the DAR award, which is quite a prestigious award, and I really never realized that until I was older, because you were chosen by your, by the faculty and your peers, which is quite an honor. So, I, I enjoyed school. In fact, one day I came down here and sat in on Tony's class. Mm -hmm. And I thought, oh, I wish I was back in school again. You know? <laughs> um, during this period, Frank Sinatra became oh, popular. Oh, yes. Did you, did yes. you like him? I did not like him. Did I not like did you. not like him, Jared. It took me years and years to like him. I, the thing I remember about him, and I'm sure many people my age do, he had the microphone in front of him. Mm -hmm. And he was always like almost like shimmying up and down the pole. And he was skinny and I don't know, I just I just did not like him. But in late years I learned to love him. You know, you know like him like him very much. You know. Did you have any like but, Bobby Soccer Bobby Soxer types running around your school or Oh yes, anything? yes. We were all Bobby Soxers. Oh. oh yes, we were. Mm hmm We uh, the girls wore dirndl skirts and peasant blouses in the good weather. We wore saddle shoes and ankle socks. That was that was the look back then. Yeah, we were all baby soxers. Yeah, <laughs> it was fun. Had a lot of friends. We made a, made up our own fun. Now, um, we had a sand lot near my home, and played softball. And the boys and girls, we all played together and got along. You know, we didn't. It wasn't anything structured. We just went and anybody that was there played. Remember any of like the particular war songs during this period, or like, and like? Oh, the Andrews sisters had a lot of them. Um, oh dear, I can't think of the names of them right now, Jared. But um, there, there were a lot. Uh, uh, White Cliffs of Dover. Mm -hmm. um, 
when Johnny comes marching home, but I'm not sure if that was a World War II song. That might have been uh, oh, Civil War. Civil War, maybe. I'm not yeah, sure. Yeah, some war songs were like recycled, I think, like over there. Yeah, were, over there. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah. Um, there were there were quite a few, but I, I can't think of you know of a lot of them to tell you. I'm sorry. You know. When you listened uh, to the radio, was it particular music, or did you like to listen to? There was a lot of, of big band, new everything, you know, a lot of big band music, big, big, big band sounds. Did you like sound. Glenn Miller? Oh, yes, definitely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Def, uh, you know, Harry James, they were, they were all good, yeah, very good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, did you follow the war closely, like in the newspaper, do you remember? Definitely, yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. we, we received the daily paper every, uh, every day. It, uh, it was called the Rutland Herald, which it still is, uh, published in Rutland, Vermont, and was delivered to our door every day. Yeah. Yeah. Do you particularly remember like any events vividly from the war itself? What kind of events? Like D-Day or... Oh, oh yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. It was um, unbelievable. I mean, the world, you know, the country went wild, that's all, you know, so thrilled. There a lot of like celebrating going on in school or after school. Uh, uh, no, not not an awful lot. Just everybody was happy and just, just you know just full of talk yeah. and yeah, you know, mm -hmm. yeah, you know, you know. Like were there yeah. other times when that was kind of like that? other times what? When that kind of like euphoria was around because of how the war was going, if there was any. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, a lot of yeah. Um, we had quite a few, even from a small town. We. Um, had quite a few fellows come come back, you know, and um, I had two cousins that were over in Europe, and um, they came back, and of course they had no jobs to come to, you know. It was very difficult for a lot of them, and these two young men had really mental, emotional problems until the day they died. They just, you know, couldn't get over it. I guess you know it was very, very hard for them. One in particular, yeah. They were like, they were not first cousins, but they were my mother's cousins, you know. We felt so bad for them. But there were a lot of men that hung around on the street corner, young men, because they had no place to go. Maybe go up to the American Legion rooms, but as far as jobs, there was nothing for them. Probably for a long, long time. Um, you talked about the shortages during the war. Mm -hmm. um, did you come up with like any kind of ingenious ways to um, deal with those? Like I've heard, like painting the nylons. Did you oh. ever? Did your mother do anything like that? Um, when I wore nylons, it might have been uh, when I was older in high school. Mm -hmm. We always wore. When we were younger, we'd wear ankle socks or knee socks in the um, uh, cooler weather, and then we had long stockings, but they were not nylon like a cotton stocking. And not too many girls like them, but anyway, uh, nowadays they're wearing these, sto these stockings like I used to wear. But I probably didn't have nylons until I was, maybe went to a dance or something. Uh, and they had the seams up the back, you know. <laughs> um, I was reading that some houses took um, something called the Victory Pledge. The what? The, I believe it was called the Victory Pledge. And they kind of pledged that they'd do their utmost to support the war. Oh, effort. well, I, I'm not familiar with not that, familiar but there could be, no, no. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I might have had it, I, I'm pretty yeah. sure it's called that. But yeah. are you familiar with the concept of like a victory girl? Mm -mm, I don't think so. Oh. Well, well, I don't know if that's kind of like a later like name for it, but just like girls who kind of like supported the war effort. Mm -hmm. No, I'm not, I'm not familiar with that. Familiar I probably should be, that. but I'm not familiar mm -hmm. with that. I'm sorry, you know, What about uh, your husband? What did your husband do during the war? Okay, my husband was 19 and when he was recruited and he went in the army and mm -hmm. he became an MP, a military policeman, okay? Mm -hmm. He hadn't been there too long when his contingent uh, and his contingent was, he was with a lot of men from Long Island, 19, they're all 19 years old. Most of them were 19 years old, I should say. And they went right over to Europe. 
and he never talked that much about it, you know, what he did, which a lot of men don't when, you know, servicemen don't. And, but he used to t tell me that he, he'd say, oh, I was only an MP and I didn't do that much, but they did have a lot of responsibility. They had to guard prisoners, they um, uh, directed traffic, and I'm sure there was many other duties they had to do. And then he also was in the African campaign, and he, from the day he went in service, it was three years until he came home again, never saw his people. Mm -hmm. He had a very, uh, a, a baby brother when he left, and when he came home he was already three years old. So think of, you know, a lot of men, how much they missed, you know, by going over there. You know. What was your kind of perception at the end of the war? Happy, glad, mm -hmm. um, sad because there were a lot of young men killed, you know, and some young men from my town never came back. People, you know, that you knew, for, you know, for a, in a small town, everybody knows everybody else. And um, very thankful, glad and, and sad, yes. Relieved. Before the war ended, um, Roosevelt died, so yes. how did you feel about that? Oh, very, very sad. Very, very sad. Everybody, anybody that liked him felt the same way, you know. Um, but when he um, met with um, Churchill and Stalin on that ship at Yalta, um, he was not well then. He probably never should have been there, but he was not that good even then. You could even tell by his looks, you know, that he wasn't well. Never realized that though, Jared, until I was older. And then, if you see the pictures of that, you can tell that he was he was not well. But he probably felt it was du his duty, and he had he had to go. <coughs> um, was your town around any kind of army camp or army base? Or? Um, no, probably Plattsburgh would have been the closest to us, even though I was in Vermont. You know. The only one I that I can remember. So you really didn't meet a lot of the army or anything like that. No, 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 mm -mm. no, no, not a one. <laughs> mm -hmm. um. huh. uh, how do you feel about the atomic bomb being dropped? I, I uh, the atomic bomb when it was dropped. Mixed was emotions. Mm -hmm. um, thinking, oh, what a terrible thing this is, you know. And then another thought was, well, if it's going to stop all this fighting, maybe it's okay. But then, you know, as you, as you got older, you realized all the, the people, innocent people that it killed, you know. It really mixed emotions, I think. Yeah. Did you ever hear about the firebombing of Dresden? No. No? No. Mm -mm. That's Germany, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, that was in yeah. Germany. That was about 100,000 people. It was a completely civilian city. And no, I don't remember that. No. Mm. Yeah. that. That was terrible. would be terrible, too, yeah. Okay. Did you um, know any women who went to work in factories or got a job as part of the war? No. Mm -mm. No. There, of course, there were no big factories around my area, you know, not even, I don't think even in Rutland. And I don't know of any young woman or any, even an older person that went to work in a factory. I'm sorry, but I, I know that didn't happen in my area. Yeah. That I'm aware of, anyway. Yeah. Um, but you, your mother was forced to get a job, right? Was yes. Because of mm -hmm. the depression. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, she became a waitress, and my older sister, as I had previously said, was ten years older than I was, so she was like a mother to us. Mm -hmm. 
helped us get off the school, and even though she, you know, she had to get off the school herself. But she, uh, we were very fortunate to have her. Yes. Yeah. Um, I can tell you maybe one thing. I don't know if you're interested, but in 1942, I was a freshman in school, and I developed a severe strep infection, throat. And I got to the point where I couldn't move in bed, et cetera. Well, anyway, um, what I had, what had happened was I had developed a septicemia, or as a layperson would say, blood poisoning. My sister Mary had just graduated from the hospital in Rutland. She's also an RN. Aqueous penicillin, which is penicillin in water, had not been on the market very long. Um, Alexander, Sir Alexander Fleming uh, discovered it way before in 1939, I understand, but in 1939 it was put on the market. So it hadn't been on the market too long. So my sister was available and she gave me injections every three hours and it saved my life. So that was going on with all that other. Important yeah. for war medicine. Yes, too. yes, yeah. yes, yes, yeah. yes, absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did the war have any effect on your decision to become an RN? No, not really, because for years I wanted to become a teacher. Mm -hmm. And the nearer I got like to eighth grade, I had a lot of girlfriends and they talked about going in to become a nurse in Rowan. And I thought, oh, you know, maybe I'd like to do that. And my older sister was an RN. Mm -hmm. And that probably influenced me more than anything, you know. Her, you know, her being a nurse. And I've never regretted it, you know. But I've often thought, too, that I would like to have been an English teacher. Hmm. I think your experience during high school was kind of surreal because or did you try to act normally? Yes, I think we tried to act normally. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Um, I think everybody pretty much acted the same. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We just, you know, did the best we could with what we had and got through it. Do you think that you've, because you've been kind of farther away from, from, okay. did you think because of any of your, because you're, you're farther away from the war, did you, do you think you could look on it with more objectively than possibly those who actually lived through it, the war, or? Do you think what you think about the war would, ex would differ greatly from a per like a veteran who lived through the war? Well, I, I imagine f feelings are different. They're right, mm -hmm. on the, right on the front, you know. But um, I remember being, uh, at that time when it started, being really afraid. Mm -hmm. And then as time went on, we had uh, blackouts at night. Mm -hmm. you're, you're probably aware of that. At that time, we had dark green shades about this color. I had to pull them at night. Okay, couldn't even no, couldn't even light up a cigarette on the street or a flashlight or anything, just in case there were planes that came over. And thank goodness there never were any. But there was always that uh, that fear. Did you, did you ever do that in school? Those? Like uh, no, no, mm -mm, no, no. Mm -hmm. Never. That never happened when we were in school. Um, did you have, you must have had an air raid siren. Right? Oh, yes, yes. So how, mm -hmm. kind of feel they would have, off? they sometimes they would have a drill, mm -hmm. you know, and it just, but they didn't amount, you know, to anything. Were you worried that it could be the drill? Yes, of mm -hmm. course. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you, you know, you're a child, you're, you're afraid, you know. Do you remember the um, air, raid, air raid warning? Did the your, did your um, neighborhood have like oh, Yes, yes, warning? yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, they did. And they wore pants. They wore khakis on their sleeve and a hard hat. And there were a group of men that that um, did that. Yeah. You know. How did your parents kind of handle the, what was going on during the air raid drills? Well, I guess probably they were afraid too. You know. Yeah. But they, but 
they weren't the type of pe people that panicked, and maybe a lot of parents weren't, you know. But just wanted to take care of their brood, I guess. <laughs> Do the best they could. Did you ever think Germany might come over? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes, that was my thought when when uh, Roosevelt gave that announcement, made that announcement, because I knew how they had been bombing, because that's all we ever heard over the radio or at the movies, you know. Um, all this bombing, and they had the V-2 rockets, and and I thought they're they're going to come. That's all there is to it. You know? In retrospect, do you think you were? Yes, I, th I think probably I was, yes. As I say, because of being a child, maybe maybe that's why, I don't know. But yes, I think so. Mm -hmm. right? do you, what did you exactly have to do during your drill? Did you have to go underneath the table? Yes, or? we did. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. This yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. We didn't, I, don't, I remember that we left the house or anything. Was the war ever talked about in church? Did you ever have sermons? Or I th I that? think uh, the minister would would have a sermon and you know pray for them. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Um, did you think that your generation really had to deal with a lot of problems as compared to other generations? No, I don't think so. No. Mm -mm. No. Um, I mean, there were problems, but. We coped the best we could, you know. We didn't get all bent out of shape that I can remember. You know, we just went along with what had to be done. <coughs> well, um, Tom Brokaw called your generation the greatest generation. Would you agree with that? Perhaps not the greatest, but a great generation. Mm -hmm. I think there's other generations that have gone through terrible times of war and famine and, and everything and I I I wouldn't want to brag and say we were the greatest but we I think we were great <laughs> um, um, after living through the depression and then the war how did life change directly after the war well th things picked up jobs came along people went about you know, the, uh, doing what they had to do. Uh, goods were more available. It took a little time, but goods became more available. And uh, of course, we were happier. And uh, I think that's about it. During the war, were you ever, like, were there a lot of posters around? Yes, yes. Uncle Sam wants you. <laughs> yes, a lot of those. A lot of posters, yeah. Where were they? Using? Loose lips, sink ships. That's another oh, one. Um, you weren't encouraged to write anything like that, like censor self censorship, really. Was those? No. Self censorship, like talking, like when writing. Oh, oh. Like loose lips, oh. sink ships, that kind mm -hmm, of thing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. No. Uh, I remember um, when I was a sophomore in school, uh, we had to write um, essays on on citizenship and so forth. And I think it was like duty, God, and country, one of those, you know. Mm -hmm. And another, a boy and myself from our class won those uh, essay contests, you know. But I, I wish I had it today, you know, but, you know, you throw things away. And, you know. I was also reading during my research for this interview that um, because of the war, the, there was some social breakdown in like juvenile delinquency increase and teen pregnancies increased during the war. Where do you, were you kind of isolated from that, being in like a small town? Yes, environment? yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. so I, I don't remember any juvenile delinquency in my town. No, mm -mm, no. We still had a lot of you know youngsters around. Mm -hmm. No, I don't. I don't remember anything like that, Jared. No. So that would no. be more like of a city phenomenon. I, I would think so, yeah. yeah. In fact, um, Rutland, Vermont was only 16 miles away from Fairhaven. Uh, it's a city, 
have you ever been up there? Mm -hmm. It's a city much like Glens Falls, I think, that type of city. And um, I don't ever remember hearing or reading anything about any problem over there. Now, whether there was anything in like Burlington, I'm not, I'm not sure. But not in my immediate area, no. Everybody was was good to help mm -hmm. and try to get this thing over with, you know. <laughs> but because of your geographic area, did you kind of consider yourself isolated? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, I would say yes. Um, from the events of the war, even, or did you still hold those? Or did you, yeah. did you think about them? You'd, you'd think about them, yeah. And especially if you went to the movies on Saturday, which we often did, because that was one of the things we did. Um, and then they had the uh, movie, uh, you know, the movie reels with, uh, you know, about the war. And uh, sometimes we would see Edward R. Murrow in some of those too, you know. So that kept us in touch a lot too. And you did worry, yes, you did, Jared. Yes, worried about the young men not coming back, maybe. You know. Did you all ever read the journalistic accounts of like Andy Rooney, like during this time? Or no, no, no. Mm -mm, no. So those kind of I mean, those, those weren't like carried by your paper. No, like, no, no, no. Stuff. Never remember him being in that uh, in the Bellman Herald. I don't remember who did who you was there. Did you Ernie Pyle? Maybe her, you heard a lot. <clears throat> yeah, heard a lot about Ernie, and he was in the movie reels a lot mm -hmm. when we went to the movies. Yeah, in you know in the news reels, I mm -hmm. should say. Yes, yes. Yeah. Um, how about magazines? Did you receive any magazines? No, if we um, had magazines, we went and bought them, you know, mm -hmm. yeah. like at the time there was photo play, you know, mm -hmm. good housekeeping, uh, look was, you know, they were the life, those, especially life magazine and look too would have a lot of articles on the war. Yeah. Did you like mm -hmm. to look at the pictures? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I know some of them could be very graphic, but, but they're the, they're the main, uh, ones that, that had those pictures you know, and stories. Do you remember like any particularly like documentaries in class? We watched the Memphis Belle. Mm -mm. Do you remember no. that? Mm -mm. Or um, the Sands of Tarawa? Mm -mm. Mm -mm. No. Mm -hmm. um, but was the atmosphere in, like during the Depression, movies were kind of, you know, like the Wizard of Oz, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Shirley Temple, um, Abbott and Costello were our favorites. And when I look at them now, I think, how come we thought they were so funny? <laughs> Judy Garland, Mickey Rooney, wonderful. And they had um, a lot of, um, MGM had a lot of beautiful uh, musicals too. You know. yeah. but those, are, those were mostly our favorites. Cowboys, we liked Tom Mix, um, Gene Autry. Those were the main ones when I was when I was young. Especially we like you know the girls like Shirley Temple, mm -hmm. Jane Withers <laughs> was her friend. Um, during the movie, were the d uh, during the war um, were the movies more somber? Would you think? No, I don't no. think so. No. Mm -mm. So they no. try to keep your mind. I I work. think I think so. Yeah. Yes. We had it um, as we grew older. You know, we got to know a lot of the the actors, uh, like Barbara Stanwyck and Ginger Rogers, Fred Astaire, and they they were all pretty good, pretty good movies. Yeah. Pleasant. You know, mm -hmm. yeah. um, I know, like some actress um, donated um, the bumpers to her car for on a, for a scrap metal. Do you know who it was, Jerry? I, I, I never remember. heard it. Oh, really? I oh. think it was, I haven't looked at the I, I'm not I think aware it was of that. Stanwyck. Could be. I think so. Mm -hmm. Do That's interesting. Do, uh, were you affected by any of like these kind of publicity things for the war? Did you kind of pay attention to them or from like the Hollywood aspect of it? I, yeah, I think we did, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was interesting, yeah. Fun to watch, yeah. Yes. Did your family ever um, buy war bonds? Yes. Mm -hmm. It wasn't easy to do, but we did have war bonds, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think everybody tried to mm -hmm. buy at least one. Mm -hmm. 
help the effort. Do you think your family did the most that it could possibly have done? Yes, under mm -hmm. the circumstances. I think so, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, my, as I say, my mother went to work um, in, uh, during the Depression, and she worked, you know, even later on, and worked full time, and she had a big family. And, and my father did too. What, what, what work there was to do, you know, he would do. And they worked back then, you know, the men worked 12 hour days. So we, we saw very little of, of the father, you know, except maybe on weekends. They all worked very hard. Did the war kind of change your outlook on life afterwards? Uh, you mean in a in a bad way? In, a, or? Uh, in any way, really? Um, certainly not in a, in a bad way. At the day we were, you know, glad to see it over and hoped it would never happen again. It was a terrible thing because there was so many hundreds of planes, you know, that bombed Pearl Harbor and the big carriers that came over. It's amazing when I think of it that we were not aware of that before that happened. You know that there was a possibility that um, that could happen. Do you, and the portrayal of films and such? Did you remember how like the Nazis were portrayed or how the Japanese were portrayed, or like in posters uh, even? Oh yeah, oh yeah, they were bad guys. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they were the bad ones. Yeah. Especially the Nazis, I think, impressed us a lot because we, I think, we heard probably more about them than we did, you know, the, the, you know, the Japanese. Um, did you think you paid more attention to the European theater? Yes, of the war? yes, mm -hmm. yes, absolutely, mm -hmm. absolutely. Do you think you should have paid more attention to the Pacific? Like currently now. I think maybe we should have. Yes, I do. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, I think um, General Douglas MacArthur did a grand job over there. You know? mm -hmm. he, that certainly wasn't easy for him either over there. I think he was a wonderful commander. Do you have any uh, like vivid recollections of like the other like leading generals like Patton or Eisenhower? Mm -hmm. um, Patton and Eisenhower. Um, I think, um, I think uh, General Mark Arnold, I think he was another one. Um, trying to think off the top of my head. Those are the ones I think I remember the most, you know. Yeah. Like anything special about them that you remember about them? I just think they were very, very intelligent men, knew their job, and, and carried it out to the best of their ability. Now, maybe a lot of people wouldn't agree with me, but that's my thought. Um, after the war, did you know anyone who got anything from the GI Bill? You were talking about how... Yes, well, yes. Um, I, I remember the fellas mm -hmm. in my town yeah. did they getting a little bit. They didn't get a lot, I guess, but they did get something. Yeah. Um, did they ever like go to college or help like, uh, uh, mortgage? I think I think some of them, if I remember, did have more, you know, help. They were helped with a mortgage. Yeah, I don't remember anybody offhand going to college. They probably did, but um, probably buying homes. Mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. Hmm. Do you think, um, amidst of all the destruction that the war brought? Do you think the world became a better place? Well, hopefully it did. Mm -hmm. I hate to say no, it didn't, but hopefully it did. You know, um, it, it's too bad that we have to have war, maybe, in order to make, perhaps, make things better. Mm -hmm. But it's been ever thus, I guess, since time began. During your during the war, what were your perceptions of the Russians like during the war? Like, 
Leningrad, Stalingrad, like, were you, like, hearing about those? Yes, we missions? heard about them, not that much, but we did know, you know, hear, hear about the Russians, yes. Yeah, we did, you know. And um, that was, um, I, I believe, Stalin was the leader at that time, yeah. yeah. But um, I don't think I remember... Um, hearing that much even on the radio, you know, at that time, or even in the movies, but we, we were aware, yeah. Okay. Kind of, did you consider them like the good guys? Also? Uh, not really, no, not from no. what we heard, no. Mm -hmm. Just kind of like a, yeah. have a common enemy? Mm -hmm. Yes. So, mm -hmm. were you mm -hmm. surprised about the events of the Cold War really coming about? Mm -hmm. You were? Mm -hmm. Just um. like not having free of how about Yalta? When do you think Roosevelt having being as sick as you were, do you think that had something to do with how the post war world turned out? Oh uh, no, I don't think so. I, I don't think so, Jerry. I'm not an expert on that, but Well, some people think that Roosevelt was weak during Yalta and that's yeah, why yeah, the yeah. Mm -hmm. East mm -hmm. East Europe. Uh, yeah, you know. yeah. Um that could be. I as I say he did look ill. He, his face was very gaunt. He had dark circles under his eyes. And of course, it was you know, cold. He had the cape around him. But I, I know I've I've heard that, mm -hmm. you know, that they felt because he was ill that he, his mental capabilities probably were not the best. But you probably didn't know that he was suffering from polio either. Uh, didn't hear about that for a long time, no. right? I know, amazing how he, um, when he'd make speeches, he'd usually sit or they would stand him before the cameras were put on him. You know, he might be here by a table, but they never um, let him be seen, you know, when, when he had the braces. Do you ever consider anything like, like the posters and such we're talking about, did you ever consider that propaganda? You mean on our posters? Yeah, our posters. No, not really. No, no. no. I don't think so. Hmm. No, I think, like the ones we were talking about, I think like Uncle Sam needs you and loose lips sink ships. I don't think there's anything propaganda about that. Do you? I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> I think they want to make us aware what you know what was going on and do your job and mm -hmm. be careful what you say and who you say it to what would you think of people who didn't want to serve in the war males that didn't want to serve during the war what did i think then or then i probably didn't even think now. of it then i then you know no i was so young yeah yeah not want to serve mm -hmm. i know um i don't know i have kind of mixed feelings about that too, you know, that uh, if we have a, you know, have a conflict and it, it must be terrible for a parent to send a child off to war because you don't know if you're ever going to see them again, you know. But in another vein, um, if, if they have to go, if somebody's got to do it, I guess. But it's not, it's not pleasant, that's for sure, to have to send someone off. Um, just lost my train of thought. Um, um, let me see here. Um, oh, yes, now I remember. Um, do you think that um, women were changed for the better as a group because of the war that became because a lot of people believe that the women's rights issue, women's rights, like the, during the 60s, was kind of born out of the war, like women going to work in the war. Do you believe that when this is true, socially? Um, do I think they were better as, as a group? Is that what you asked? Yeah, yeah. well, uh, kind of like, like before the war and after mm -hmm. the war. Mm -hmm. I think um, the, the war makes everyone 
stop and think and maybe make you a better person. And try to make sure it doesn't happen again. If women can do that. Well, I'm talking kind of like economically. Do you like, or like, as a social contest, like towards equality towards men? Do you think that? Oh, 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 oh. Um, I, I never. Uh, I never believed you had to be subservient to a to a man, you know. But I think mm -hmm. the women's rights group carried a little bit too far sometimes. Um, or they've got to have this and they've got to have that and they have to join the men's groups and I, what what harm is there in in a man having his own group or a woman having her own group you know why you know do we always have to be intermingled I mean we can still get along is my thought Would you ever want your children to have lived, had to have done the same thing that you would have done or your husband would have done during the war? To live like we lived, yes. you mean? Mm -hmm. Well, yes and no. We, we lived during the war and we got along. We're here to talk about it. But like any parent with children, you know, you want the best for them and the safest for them and the kindest for them. So it would be kind of hard. But let's hope we don't have to, you, especially you, growing up, don't yeah. have to go the, through anything like that. The draft might come back. Mm -hmm. Yes, thought. yeah, I know it. <clears throat> do, you th do you think, Jared, that if the draft doesn't come back and there's another big conflict. You think there's a lot of young gentlemen that wouldn't go? They couldn't, you know, would they have to be forced to go? Or, of course, with the draft, you're obligated. Or they, I, I don't know if they jail you or what. But yeah, you yeah. can get, yeah. You can definitely get jailed for yeah. resisting the draft. Yeah, yeah. But, so I don't know, ever easy. since Vietnam, these attitudes have definitely changed. I don't. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, true. I don't, I personally, I don't really know. I think it's, yeah. you know, it's hard to. It's, it's hard to imagine whether you, right. if it hasn't happened, you really, it's something you really mm -hmm. want to dwell on. You don't want to think about it, that's right. Mm-hmm. And you don't want to think about it. I don't, I don't even know what I would do. You don't know what you would do. It's like anything, you mm -hmm. don't always know what you're going to do until you're faced with the situation. Mm -hmm. That could be anything in life. Do you think that because of the war, like econo um, speaking economically, do you think that because after the war, do you think America deserved its place as like the pinnacle economically of the world? Like being, like did you you saw prosperity return? After yes. Like oh yes. 50s. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. Do you think that was deserved because of what we went through? Probably, probably, yeah. We had to get back on our feet. Mm -hmm. you know. Didn't want to have things stay the way they were. Mm -hmm. Has your feelings of the, have your feelings of during, about the war changed as you've gone through life? Or do you do you look as a as a period of like, kind of happiness, like a. A happy period in your life, or kind of like a sad period in your life, or perhaps a mixture of both. Uh, a mixture of both, yes. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, a mixture of both. Would you kind of call them the, the good old days, possibly? Yeah. Or right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, and um, it just, you know, when I th when I think about it, it was just unbelievable, you know, what had happened. You know, when the Japanese bombed Pearl Harbor, and, and one thing led to another. You know, but we survived. Mm -hmm. You either survive or you sink. That's all. So you can you can get up 
and do something about it, like any events in life that, you know, might happen that aren't so great. And you can get up and do something about it, or you can sit in a chair and wither away. That's my thought. Okay. Well, I think that's all the questions I have for all you. All right. So, it's been yes. very nice talking to you. I Thank hope you. I've enlightened you <laughs> somewhat. <laughs> all right. This concludes our interview. <laughs>